on today's episode of The Unwritten Rule. Um, it's another two-man show, just Peyton and I for your Monday. Jack is traveling back from the Final Four, actually moving to Alabama here soon. So it's just going to be me and him for a pretty quick show. Uh, we got to talk about some Sean Easton, a college all-star game. Uh, Mizzou Chess, uh, talk about those guys. They are absolute ballers on the board, and we can maybe get into it about if Peyton is, is the better chess player I am. And we got some fun things and quick hits, of course, with uh, Ken Sports Shorts, Dirty Birds of the Weekend, and a little bit of a twist to fraud rankings this week before we close it out with Peyton's coveted joke of the week. But before we get to that, um, we need a read from our Bet Online sponsor. Bet Online continues to be your number one source for all your basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. With up to the minute odds, stats, and trends, you can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop or your mobile devices. Head to Bet Online today to become part of the team. And remember to use promo code BELIEVE, that's B L E A V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, the game starts here, and the Unwritten Rule will start here in just a second. But Peyton, let's take a look at some of these odds. I'm going to let you go first this week because it's right on the screen if you're watching on the YouTube. If you want to get a look at how Bet Online looks, of course, they did uh, revamp everything um, in the last couple of weeks and looks pretty clean. But uh, Peyton, tell us about your, your bet of the week. Yeah, UConn's been good to me. Uh, they've handled business basically every time I've needed them to. So I'm going to go back to the well. I just don't think anybody's as good as them. I think Purdue is probably the second best team in the country. I think. It's very rare you get the two best teams in the national championship, but I think that's happened this year. But I think the best team is going to pull this out. Seven seems like a gaudy number. I don't know, man. This UConn team is real good. I just I don't see them messing with their food. I, I think I think UConn <laughs> gets it done. Yeah, um, kind of there with you. Uh, that UConn one for the Alabama game hit did hit for you. We actually went three for three last week. Uh, Dan Hurley just continuing to uh, put the put UConn on like this pedestal of how they're you know the underdogs and everything they do, and the Huskies are just dominant and everything. And I think this will be a fun one though, um, seeing Zach Eady in the national championship as well. Um, there's either you know there's only two two ways you like Zach Eady. Um, you either like him or you hate him. And I think a lot of people around us and on this podcast aren't too big of fans of him. No pun intended, because he's a big guy. Uh, my bet of the week, we're going to go to the soccer world. Pretty cool. You can look uh, by country here. and We are Bundesliga fans because we are Bayer Leverkusen fans. But Peyton, I think you know this already. Bayer Leverkusen hasn't lost a game um, since we started supporting this, this club. And Leverkusen is hosting Werder Bremen on Sunday, April 14th. And I'm betting... Minus five ten odds that they win this game. Uh, I know that's not the best of odds. You're betting five hundred ten dollars in there uh, to make a hundred, but this is just free money at this point. Um, there is no, I don't think, believe, there's no push in in uh, soccer because you can bet on ties. Uh, so th this will be. Uh, I think this is an easy one. I think I think everyone should just continue to bet on our, our good friends at Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, yeah, I don't think the bread makers in at uh, Werder Bremen. Uh, are going to know what hit them. I think uh, Bayer Leverkusen gets it done. Uh, I hope we can keep Zabi, um, but I've seen rumors that he might take uh, the job at Liverpool, Knowlton's team. So One that, more year. That, that would be a bummer, but come on. Come on, Leverkusen. Yeah, um, since I put in this bet as my uh, bet of the week, it's actually changed uh, to plus four for Werder. It was originally plus three. Uh, so it looks like wow. a lot of people are... Going for Bayer Leverkusen in this game. Um, that's it for uh, Best Beats of the Week. Uh, Jack did not send his in to us, so if you follow us on our Twitter, I believe Unwritten, uh, you'll see it there on Monday, and you'll get to see what he chose because he's been kind of on a heater as well, so I think everyone should back whatever he says. Um, but that's it for Best Beats of the Week. Um, the Unwritten Rule starts right now. I just... I... Marcel, where are you going with that disc? You are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button... You are in very, very big trouble. Attention. Everybody stop what you're doing. It's time for The Unwritten Rule, a Mizzou sports podcast brought to you by the Believe Network, alongside Peyton Haverman and Kenny Van Doren. Here is your host, Jack Knowlton.
back to the unwritten rule. Today is Monday, April 8th. And of course, like I said in the intro, just two man show, just Peyton and I today, and kind of like last Monday show. Not much going on. We can talk about Sean East. Um, Sean East was a winner, Peyton. I think that that's where we can kind of start there. Um, they it, he was in the Reese's All Star uh, game uh, East and West, and he ended up on Team West. Team West won eighty seven to seventy five. Sean East was in that starting five. You're watching on the YouTube, you can see the full box score here. Peyton and I were looking at it right before we got on here. And it looked like, you know, a nice performance with the 13 points, but the one real eye catching number is those seven turnovers, but it's still cool to see Shawnee starting in an all-star game called all-star game. It's filled with a bunch of just names um, around college basketball. Uh, we know last year, Des Moines Hodge competed in the three point contest at the final four. Good to see Mizzou represented again with Sean East here, especially with him pursuing a, a professional career at the same time um, with his Mizzou career wrapping up, his whole college career wrapping up. Uh, what did you kind of just take away from this box score? I know Jack was there at the game, wish he could be on. Maybe we'll we'll talk with him next week about uh, how he how he saw Sean East play. Um, I did actually see a couple um, highlights from it as well. I mean, he was he was doing Shawnee's things. You know, he was just handling the ball like crazy. Um, it was really really just a typical Shawnee's performance. Also, uh, a number that pops out to me are his seven rebounds. Uh, I know he led Mizzou in rebounds in a lot of games, but in the All Star game, seven rebounds. It didn't lead the team, but that's still a pretty crazy number. But like you said, really a who's who of college players in here, like Tyler Perry, Kasey Tominaga was on the team, uh, Jesse Edwards, Jalen House, uh, just guys from all over the place that I recognize. On the other team, you had like Drew Pember. Um, that was the one I knew. Um, Jack Golke <laughs> was on the other team. He parlayed his March success into one for into- five from three. Ooh. Which means he was one for five from the field, right? Or is that one for six? No, he's one for six. Yeah. He took a, wow. Took another mid range. Wow. Um, also, really shameful of uh, the organizers of this event to put Sean East on Team Weast. Uh, not sure what they were thinking there. It's kind of right there. Make him the team captain of Team East. But either way, I mean, cool for Sean East. Uh, he, he got to play on a national stage. Um, he played all right. I mean, the turnovers are kind of unavoidable. Like, you can't, like, when I, when looking at this game, like, you can't just overlook those. But cool for Sean East. I'm sure he'll get an opportunity to play professionally somewhere. Uh, and good luck to him. Uh, yeah, I know plus minus is kind of a dying number to some people. But uh, 19, um, fourth best on the team. Yep. Uh, pretty good starting five, though, for Team West altogether. Uh, really good play from Sean, and um, hopefully we'll get to see that on a professional stage this summer if he gets a, an invite to um, you know, a summer league team or anything else overseas, wherever he kind of ends up. So we'll follow that. Uh, but that's kind of it from the basketball point of view. Really don't have anything else on the recruiting front. No new commits, uh, but we'll have that whenever, whenever that's there. Uh, I mentioned this in the... Uh, before we started, but Peyton Mizzou chess and someone DM this to us and said, we had to talk about it. And I forgot to put it on the, uh, on the show for Friday, but Mizzou chess uh, final four champions, second consecutive appearance at the final four. And the trophy is coming home to Mizzou. Really awesome to see that we are a chess school. Yeah. National champs. Uh, does the, uh, first of all, good on Mizzou chess for using hashtag standing on business. Uh, it's just been become a rallying cry for the whole university. Um, question for you, Kenny. Does this mean more than the disc golf championship? That's a tough one because uh, I felt like there for a little while that Mizzou was only a disc golf school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the disc golf one means a little bit more because there just wasn't really anything happening at the time. And Mizzou yeah. Chess... Um, is in the shadow of a Cotton Bowl trophy. And that, that's very unfortunate. We should still give them their flowers. But th- the disc golf one happened at like one of Mizzou's lowest points. So I'm, yeah. I'm going to say disc golf is just has the, the slight edge, but still give the flowers to Mizzou chess. Disc golf uh, ran, uh, uh, walked so that chess and football could run is uh, the way I'll put it. Okay, That's good. 
Um, let's give some shout outs to the some of the chess the... grandmaster. Yeah, chess grandmaster Christian Trilla. Uh, shout out to you, Gregory O'Parian and Harshi Raja. Uh, this is uh, really cool to see you guys rock. Um, maybe one day we can have you on the show. That would be really cool if we get one of them on the show or even all of them and we play an online chess game on the show and see if we can uh, at least uh, stick around for maybe six or six plus moves. I would uh, lose. Let's try that. Turns. I'm, I'm, I'm going to reach out to one of them and uh, maybe we can get him on the show and talk about it. Cause this is a really cool accomplishment. Mizzou college arts and science. If you're watching the YouTube did reply M I Z and the, the Mizzou account, like the official Mizzou account replied Z O U just great backing from everybody. Um, and I, I just love how all of if you're watching on the YouTube, you can see uh, this funny photo, but uh, there's just a, a lot of love towards these guys and they, they did a great job. Yeah, no, 100%. I mean, it's cool to win a championship and everything. Also, I love that these guys, every single one of them had like their account dedicated to like making sure you know that they are on the chess team. Mm -hmm. Do you think chess recruitment is like football recruitment where they will go like, uh, blessed to receive an offer from Mizzou University chess team? Oh, this is the coach. Um... Yeah, this is the coach, actually, Christian Trilla. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be really sick if mm -hmm. they they post like a little graphic or blessed to receive an offer. And here's my 1,000 percent committed to Mizzou chess. Committed, yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. Well, very cool to see these guys rock. These are dudes. <laughs> that's what I'll say. Uh, that's kind of it's it really though really for cool. our uh, Mizzou segment to start off today's show. Not much else really going on. If we had any updates on the AD search, uh, there's a bunch of a couple of crystal balls kind of being thrown out there for um, future casts and other things thrown out there for some Mizzou targets. So we'll maybe get into that a little bit more on Friday when we have more concrete um, reports and news on some of those guys in the class of 2025. Um, but we'll go to quick hits here next. <laughs> All right, quick hits time here on the under and rule. Uh, lead it off with Ken's sports shorts. Of course, we're going to Sporkle again. Pretty fun one here. I think everyone should jump on the YouTube if they can. This is um, one that you might want to play with us. But it's, do you remember these Missouri Tigers and it's all football players? There's 15 photos that will be popping up on our screen. And we'll do, we'll do our best to describe the player to you. Um, maybe just give a number and maybe a time era if, if we're struggling with it. And you can start yelling at us that we're not remembering because we're too young. Uh, the we one thing won't. I want to apologize though, is I need to get ad blocker. Cause man, oh man, uh, this is like two weeks in a row now with just Peyton and I, that my, my screen has been flooded by just the most random ads for different things that I don't even want to talk about, but maybe you that's just, we'll leave the ones you got up there now because yeah, I'm not even going to touch these. Uh, if you're a step-by-step, -step, this is a Christian school ad or spicy nuggets. It's in Spanish, uh, for McDonald's Mc, McNuggets han vuelto. Yeah, I, I don't know what controls these because these are just the most random things. And I don't even search anything on here except sports. So, uh, yeah, let, let's let's do this. Just want to apologize then. Disclaimer, disclaimer to Peyton's grandmother who uh, religiously watches us and is a very good supporter. I'm sorry you have to deal with these ads. Uh, so let's play the quiz. Uh, Peyton, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. All right. Th I think this one's pretty easy. Hmm. Uh, oh, it got, uh, uh, Taylor Powell, Drew Lock. Okay, we have five minutes to do it. Oh, yeah. Man, it that's Kelly Bryant. Kelly Bryant, Peyton. Ooh, okay, I, it is skipping ahead now. All right, Kelly Bryant. Still one of my favorite Tigers because he was our freshman year QB. Huh. Uh Theo Weiss. Oh, wait, that's Luther Burden. Um, next. Kellen Winslow. There you go. Next. Okay, Harrison Mevis. This okay, I thought this was a little bit harder than it is. Maybe it'll get harder. Okay, Cody Schrader. Come on, give me something. Did Chase Daniel wear 10? It is Chase Daniel. Is Chase Daniel, okay. I, for whatever reason, kept thinking he wore one. That's Blaine Gabbert. Correct. All right, 65 okay, offensive go. linemen. I think I think I know who this is, Peyton. He's still in the NFL. Yeah, there's about four offensive linemen this could be. Is it Mitch Morse? That's who I think it is. I think it's Mitch Morse. Yeah, okay. Is that Nick Bolton? It yep. is Nick Bolton. We got 10 Albert out of 15 photo. here. Ooh, is that Albert O? Okay, this, this better be... <laughs> oh, 
Oh, okay. I actually think I know how to spell it. Okay, okay oh, go ahead. We have time. Okay, W E G. W U E G. Sorry. E G. Oh, E G. Yeah. B U N A M. Boonum. Yep. There we go. Albert O. Tyler Beatty. Here. There you go. Only one. There you go. Tyler Batty. Whoa. Gasparilla Bowl, Brady Cook. Oh my God, that's some lore. Oh crap. Um. Okay, this is. He's been in a couple of our trivia's in... already. Uh, uh, Doriel Green Beckham. Right. This isn't him. I don't think so. I think it's a different receiver. On that Cotton Bowl team. Oh, who else was there? Ladamian Washington, maybe. Yep. Yes, let's go. Yeah, he's definitely been in some of our trivia. Oh, easy one here. Tony Temple. Is it not Tony Temple? I don't oh, it's think Jay so. Macklin, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so like, am I seeing something wrong? Okay, we got 100. percent Two minutes and two twenty-seven to spare. Bad. That was a fun one. Yeah, I see that Cotton Bowl, and every time I see that Cotton Bowl, it's normally with the question, "Who has the like r- Cotton Bowl record or Mizzou record for?" rushing yards in a bowl game and it would be tony temple in that game so okay only yeah, I, was like, I, was like, I feel like God, number nine you always have to go macklin yeah 68 yeah. percent is the average score we're the wow. only play today we're real mizzou fans yeah when you said it was going to be faces off air um i genuinely was thinking it would be like people's literal faces like their headshots just headshots yeah i thought <laughs> it'd be a lot be harder fair. yeah it would but yeah, yeah. We're, we're the best. True Mizzou fans. Right. Old Missouri, fair Missouri, minor league baseball. Ba, ba, da, 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 da. All right, uh, three birds of yeah. the weekend. And this one's still going on. Recording here on a Sunday. Uh, almost It's almost one o'clock here. And Alec Manoa continues to struggle. And we we talked about this when we were still on the radio last year when he was having these struggles with the blue jays and the pitch clock and all these things were circling alec manoa and he went one and two thirds innings in a single a game today and he gave up seven runs six earned on five hits four walks and two k's and he gave up a home run i i think he's broken i you know he was an all-star he was a top 100 prospect he was just like this electric big guy pitcher that just looked like fun for for the Blue Jays. Maybe a lot of people didn't like him on other teams just because it just happens when you're good and you're kind of talkative. But I think it's, it's almost the end of the road for Alec Manoa right now. Pressure is for tires, Kenny. Um, yeah, I didn't want to say it. But no, uh, I have I had no idea he actually started down in Class A. Um, boy, oh boy, I thought he had been at least somewhat fixed during spring training. I guess not. That's uh real bad news if you're a Blue Jays fan. I don't even know how much, like, how much value would he have to a team in a trade, really, at this point. I mean, he has been... A you're still on that, uh, that, like, you're still on your original contract, so maybe there's some value there. I was a little bit surprised. I don't know if you saw if you knew this, Peyton, but his ERA last season in 2023 was just five eight seven. Um, That's pretty terrible, I, still. Yeah, it's still pretty bad, but it's better than I originally thought it was. I thought it would have been in the sixes, but maybe uh, yeah. This was his, in the minors because he was pitching in the complex league and double and double A he pitched fine, but when he in was in the complex part. league trying to hit that reset, that's when we first talked about how he was struggling last year. Yeah, I mean, geez. I mean, he must be throwing absolute meatballs, but that's, we'll see if he can fix it. I don't know what has happened there. I mean, that's almost got to be like the yips or something. It's that bad, but we're going to move on. We're going to stick in baseball, but we're going to go major league here. Um, my dirty bird of the week is going to be major league baseball. If you can't figure out why they're my dirty bird, uh, <laughs> it's because they have several bird teams in their league. So Major League Baseball, uh, Nolan Shanuel, is that how you pronounce it, Kenny? I know you're the... Shanuel. Shanuel. Um, he was the Angels' first-round pick last year. Had a meteoric rise. I mean, he, he made the majors quick, uh, and I thought it was, like, way too fast, but he's held his own. He started his um, 
uh, he started his career with a on base streak of 30 plus games, but MLB went back and changed a single he had during that streak in their 330 game against Baltimore. They changed it to an error. Um, so that snapped the streak at 30. Uh, his streak is no longer going. Uh, the Angels broadcast laid into Major League Baseball for this. Uh, they they like made sure to bring up all of the other transgressions Major League Baseball has going against it right now. Um, they were not happy campers. I think it is a little lame to have uh, Shanuel's Shan uh, streak end like that. Bummer for him. End of the day, but at, I did also see the clip that was in question. It did kind of seem like an error, but mm -hmm. it, I don't know. It just a week later having that snapped for him is kind of bitter. Yeah, it, it's, you know, I get it. You know, things are going to change. And I, something similar happened with Kyle Tucker last year. He almost had a 30 30 season. And then an inside the park home run got changed from a inside the park home run to a triple with an error. And that stuff just happens, but that happened like instantly. This one happened a week later, and that, that's just like the head scratcher and kind of annoying part. If you want to grow the game with a bunch of your young players, you know, why take away their accomplishments so, so like far down the line? And that's just like the, the weird thing. And I know that there's been a lot of accounts that have been following this for the last week and posting updates on every single time he reaches base. Now, all of that just is no longer true. Um, you know, it's no fault to them, but that's just how it kind of goes from there because I mean, he had this best, I mean, one of the, the best starts to a major league career. And now it's just kind of thrown away in the last week. Um, he did. Uh, he had, I think he had like, I forget what the number was, but I know you guys talked about Anthony Rendon last week. He had, uh, he got drafted, um, played in like single a high a double a, and then made it to major league baseball before he got, before Rendon got his first hit again. I don't know if you saw that, Peyton. I did see that. Yeah, that it was pretty incredible. It was like his last hit came when Shanuel was playing at uh, Florida Atlantic last year. Um, and But hey, Rendon just beat that streak. He had a hit. It was an infield hit because Rafael Devers is just brutal at third base. Um, but yeah, pretty big bummer for Shanuel, but it is what it is. All right, uh said Jackson on the show and he actually got a got his dirty bird of the weekend pretty quickly here. I don't know if you guys can see my text messages, but I'm opening it real quick. Um, here's uh, his dirty bird of the weekend goes to um, Chevy Alonzo. Peyton talked about him earlier. 41 matches unbeaten. Uh, pretty incredible. Uh, this guy is not going to be around for Bayer Leverkusen much longer. Talking with Jack, though, the other day, it does sound like he'll stay one more season and then every team that needs a coach or that wants to fire their coach uh, will be coming to Zebi Alonso and offering him whatever he wants. Pretty incredible run for our Bayer Leverkusen Lions. Just look at that. 41 matches unbeaten. Look at that. Just not a couple draws in there, you know. It is what it is. But you can't beat the Lions. Look oh, at that. There's Dirk. There's Dirk Nowitzki. He's on our side. Yeah. Go Bayer Leverkusen. Go by Leverkusen. Okay. Um, Peyton, we're going to change it up just a little bit. See how this goes. The fraud rankings this oh, week sir. coming in at number five on the fraud rankings. Yeah, a bit of a reserved, a slow play fraud rankings. We'll treat this kind of like a tennis match. Number five on the fraud rankings are the Florida Gators baseball team. Why? Because... Them and should be number one pick Jack Caglione, or is that, am I saying that right, Kenny? Jack Caglione, um, he pitches and he hits, but he couldn't do enough of either to beat the Missouri Tigers. Uh, the number six in the nation, Florida Gators, uh, fell twice in Columbia. Nobody comes to Columbia, Missouri, and wins uh, two games in a row. If you're 2024 Florida Gators, uh, Missouri, that was their first. SEC series victory um, under Carrick Jackson. Uh, very good progress has been made under Carrick uh, since SEC play started. You know, they had a pretty rough non-con. Their pitching was all over the place. It's come up pretty big for them lately. Um, Carter Rustad uh, in particular and Logan Lunsford in that game one were excellent. The one run was a solo shot 
and Carter Rustad through like five innings in relief. Otherwise, uh, it was very good. Jetty Hernandez, he had the walk off in game one. He had on the his game birthday. Tire. Yeah, had the game tire in uh, in game two, and Missouri took the lead on a wild pitch. So yeah, Missouri has a chance for a sweep. Uh, it's going to happen after we're recording, but so you'll know either way, <laughs> but, um, Florida, they're the frauds regardless because they lost to the big bad tigers twice. Number four on the fraud rankings is unfortunately going to be the NC state, uh, lady wolf pack. Um, the lady pack, they hung tough with, uh, South Carolina for a half. Uh, they were the three seed in the final four against unbeaten number one seed, South Carolina with just the greatest coach in women's college basketball right now in Don Staley. Um, They were only down one, but I mean, South Carolina came out and blew the doors off them uh, in the second half. As you can see there in the third quarter, they outscored NC state 29 to six game was over after that. South Carolina is going to be playing Iowa just a couple hours after we record here for the national title. I do think they will be winning. Um, So yeah, Wolfpack, you're still my frauds of the week and yeah this game though Peyton I'll be honest you know I was pretty you know I was paying a lot of attention this year just because it was such a fun uh women's tournament just fun season for women's basketball I didn't even know I didn't even like watch this game I I, it totally slipped my mind that it was happening because it was just so much more around this UConn and uh Iowa game and I just totally forgot that NC State made it in both the men's and women's um this season and that's pretty good yeah, uh, pretty good segue to go there. NC State Wolfpack falling 63-50 to 50 to the Purdue Boilmakers. I think we all kind of wanted Modiara to you know, make it to the championship and win it all. Uh, I think a lot of people liked Mo. Only two points. He looked really frustrated against Zach Eady in this game. I think there was a couple times where he kind of pushed him. He had his like, arm up and he pushed it out of the way and uh, just did not look like the best game for those guys. DJ Burns is one of the the coolest stories in college basketball this year. Very unfortunate that they have to fall into the fraud rankings this week. Um, didn't really have much to choose from, but I, God, man, I don't even want to call them frauds because they were in 11th seed and really got in on a couple strokes of luck. But NC State Wolfpack, you were number three in the fraud rankings. Sorry to Peyton's uh, former future alma mater. Yeah, I mean... All you got to think about, though, like if Missouri had a run like that, it would be something we'd talk about for like ever, yeah. forever. So good for the schools. Yeah. Uh, falling at number two in the fraud rankings. The queen did not get her thrown back. Paige Beckers. What happened, um, Paige? Losing this one. She played all 40 minutes uh, and scored 17 points. Paige Beckers and the Connecticut Huskies fall 71 to 69 in the final four. Wasn't even the, the best game from Caitlin Clark. She had 21 points. Yeah. Uh, almost had a triple double. That would have been really sick if it wasn't even like her best game and she still had a triple double. She had nine rebounds, seven assists. The UConn Huskies, um, number number two in the fraud rankings, number three in the tournaments. Uh, very unfortunate for Paige Beckers. And this is how you know like women's college basketball has kind of like arrived because like this was all people were talking about. Like the night mm-hmm. it happened. I mean, that foul call at the end was like all people were buzzing about on Twitter. Uh, there were a lot of texts that between like us in our group chat uh, about it. Very compelling game. Before you start this one, Peyton, um, I kind of want to change things up real quick. Um, You're getting a behind the scenes look. Whoa! 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 whoa. I'm getting pissed about the time. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Oh, they tried their hardest. But the Alabama Crimson Tide was simply swept away by the current that is Dan Hurley and the Connecticut Husky. They tried to hang around. They tried to shoot their little three ball all the time. Donovan Klingman and the Yukon Huskies will not be enough. Once again, Nate Oates will never ever be that guy you never win a, a national title at alabama real talk i'm so relieved alabama did not win this game uh that would have ruined the tournament for me but now i can watch the tournament stress free because uh 
It doesn't matter who wins to me. I don't just, uh, hate either one of these teams. Yeah, I felt like we had to bring the music back. For Alabama. For Alabama. I, I yeah. felt bad about some of the other ones that slipped in the fraud rankings, just because, I mean, they weren't necessarily frauds, but I think we had to go with Alabama. Uh, no, absolutely. Yeah. But, uh... Do you want to let the music play for, uh... Oh, for, you want to play for the joke? For your joke? Sure. I mean, up to you. Joke. Maybe turn it down oh, a little bit. Turn it down a little bit. Oh, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll crank that down to, like, 20 mark, 24. Yeah, let it play. Play here again. Let me go over to my, uh best joke of the week this one comes from our favorite tv series the today show penny did you hear about the king that went to the dentist yeah yeah you got a crown he needed to get crowns yep there you go how about one more for the road why do nurses like red crayons Ooh. this is a good one dang it i feel like I, oh my gosh i feel like i should know why because sometimes they have to draw blood. Oh, I knew it had to do something with blood, but I couldn't figure it out. Good one, I just right? kept thinking of like a, like one of those bags of blood when they already drew, the blood's being drawn. God, I should have known that. Oh, well. Okay. Well, that was a quick uh, unwritten rule this week. Going to hit the music. We'll uh, say our goodbyes. Good joke of the week, Peyton. Um, you like this background? If anyone's watching on the This on is YouTube. pretty. I really yeah. like this. It's called yeah. Mango. You guys can see that there in the behind the scenes look, but it's called Mango. It's beautiful. Yeah, if you uh, if you're watching on the YouTube, you can see that. We'll uh, we'll go full screen here. Um, good show this week. We'll have some more stuff on the basketball front. Uh, Peyton did mention that the uh, um, kind of, of a quiet a period right here, a little dead yeah. period before the Final Four and the national championship are over. Um, so we'll, we'll get some more information on possible transfers, possible targets in the next week or so. We'll have that for you on Friday's show, especially with maybe some more on the football front as the uh, class of 2025 starts to heat up for the Mizzou Tigers and the football team. Um, this has been the Unwritten Rule presented by Bet Online. We'll see you guys next week. Um, the three of us will all be back together, hopefully. So we'll see you then. Yay!